Three, two, one, go. Welcome back, everybody, to the Triad of the Force podcast, a podcast from three Puerto Rican friends coming together to do deep dives into Star Wars and other nerd-related media. This is our Mando Monday, and today we are talking about Chapter 14, The Tragedy. Right. And before we get into it, I just want to say, as soon as the title came up, my husband and I were just like, shit. Oh, yes. This is the oh, first title that no. was not leaked. It was a total <laughs> surprise for everybody. Yeah. My, it was like oh a visceral reaction to it. Like, yes. oh no, it's things like, are going to happen. <laughs> this is it. And they did. Things and did happen. Did. <laughs> so guys, first I mean, impressions. One thing was predictable. The other one wasn't. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but my first impression, we lost Mo for a couple of seconds. But my first, uh, he's back. Uh, my first impressions <laughs> for it was that like, it seems like someone at Lucasfilm Obviously, it's fake because they record this before we even start our we even started this show. But someone at Lucasfilm heard our chapter thirteen, the Jedi review, and they took it to heart and they <laughs> made all the adjustments and fixed this episode because everything that we complained about the last episode was absolutely fixed. Yeah. Well, maybe not absolutely, but yeah. on the on the whole, fixed mm -hmm. with this episode. I think it was a fantastic way to kind of go into the final arc of the season. And now mm -hmm. we only have two episodes left after this one, but it was it was it, it was great. It was so much fun. And even though it was the shortest uh, episode of the season so far, I think it's one of the episodes that have had the most content in it. Mm -hmm. Interestingly enough, but I absolutely loved it. You, Mo, what do you think? I I was just mesmerized <laughs> by it. Yeah. Honestly, I think after kind of like what Goose said. Uh, they tied those loose ends of like you know there's no conflict mando's mm -hmm. not going anywhere what's what's the deal with grogu mm -hmm. and then all of a sudden and then you bring back boba from the first episode and then mm -hmm. boba, everything just i know it, it oh ties God. to it, it's 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 weird because it it almost the episode in a way feels like uh the best comparison i have is like a hurricane it starts mm -hmm. a little bit strong then there's like the calm and then there's like the back win, which is like even stronger and like, yep. whoa, like it mm -hmm. blows your mind. So I think all in yeah. all, it's, it was an amazing episode. Yeah. Um, I thought it was really, it was just really exciting. It felt very, very Star Wars. Um, I remember as I was watching it, I was like, is it just me? Because this episode is so good. I would turn to the host bando and be like, I'm not crazy here, right? This <laughs> yeah. is an actually good episode. Oh my God. Yeah. And, you know, you have Mando finally actually doing things and yeah. you have Grogu doing things and you have stakes. Like from the beginning, obviously from the title, you know, there's stakes. You don't necessarily know exactly what's going to happen, but you know, you know, it, stuff's you know going down. Gonna yeah. Yeah. You know so, what's going to happen. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, Which is my only complaint, but we'll get into that. I know, later. but um, we had but, speculated but... about what was going <laughs> to happen on this episode, and Goose got it right. It was like the first like really action packed one that we've had in a while. Not to take away from like Soda's fighting scenes and stuff, but this yeah. one worked. Like all the actions yeah. worked. The introductions of the other characters didn't feel like it was just fan service. It mm -hmm. it all worked together. So why don't we uh, start talking about the episode then? Get started. Uh, as a brief recap of what happened in this week's episode, we basically start off where we left off in last episode, which is Mando and Grogu. We have to make an effort to call Grogu by his name. Uh, Grogu are going to Tython so that they can place the child, formal, the child. Grogu, the child formerly known as Baby Yoda, oh. mm -hmm. uh, onto the seeing stone of the Jedi Temple on Tython. While they arrive there, there's this fantastic scene where they can't park the chip, <laughs> the chip yeah. uh, near the temple. So Mando says this fantastic uh, thing where he says, like, we're going to have to do the rest of the journey with the windows, windows down. down. <laughs> and then it's this great scene with Mando just jet packing it with Grogu and Grogu having a great time in his daddy convertible. Yeah, and um, you can actually hear him kind of squealing, <laughs> too, yeah, like, yeah, of yeah. joy. Yes. It was such a nice little touch. <laughs> and, and, so much fun. And, and, and even before that, I loved how we finally see Mando and Grogu kind of having communication, yes. like back yeah. and forth yes. communication yeah. and Grogu mm -hmm. actually understanding Mando. Yeah. And every time he was like, you do understand, I have to leave you behind. Grogu yeah. was like, uh, And not only that, it sounded like he was trying to convince himself that he yeah. has to leave Grogu <laughs> yeah, behind. Yeah, that's like, exactly like, what I, 
yeah. that's exactly what I was gonna say. I didn't go into yeah. it because I I thought we would like dissect that after like yeah. brief uh, brown view, but I absolutely got those vibes. Mm-hmm. Uh, but let's uh, finish real quick with what happened yeah. in the episode. Yes. So they go into the Seeing Stone. Uh, they put Grogu in the on the on the stone, and all of a sudden Grogu goes full lotus position. Looks oh cat- yeah, that was Jedi. so well done. <laughs> <laughs> and turns on the force field, literally, and then we uh, it's pretty cool scene because then we see like the Jedi runes around the scene mm-hmm. stone, kind of like Jedi Fallen Order and Rebels. So that was a cool little visual tie back. Uh, but all of a sudden, oh, what does Mando see when he looks into the horizon? <laughs> a familiar ship, a ship yeah. I did not expect to see in this episode. Nope. The Slave One, mm-hmm. yeah. and it could only mean one thing: <laughs> Boba Fett is coming. <laughs> Mando goes out to confront confront whoever is uh, on the Slave 1, and lo and behold, the hooded ma- man from Chapter 11 walks down that ramp to Mora Morrison in his black robes with the uh, gaffy stick and the mm-hmm. Tuscan rifle there to confront Mando. And it was a short interaction, but a good one, because yeah. obviously Mando goes back into his ways of like arguing with uh, Boba Fett about what a Mandalorian is, and obviously yeah. uh, Boba has a very different idea of what being a Mando is, but mm-hmm. uh, we'll get into that a little bit later. Yeah. After that, we Boba lets Mando know that uh, someone has a rifle pointed at who? At Grogu. So Mando's like, okay, we have to deal with this. He takes out the jetpack at the request of Boba so they can not have a standoff anymore, and while they're discussing things, all of a sudden... We realized that the person who was the sniper, Fennec Shand, surprise, yeah. surprise, she sur- mm-hmm. she survived the encounter from uh, Toro Calican, worst character in Mandalorian ever, and <laughs> Mandalorian. Uh, long story short, while they're discussing, uh, negotiating, boom, the the Empire shows up in very uh, first order looking transport ship. Yep. Mm-hmm. Uh, a battle ensues. Uh, Mando kind of like ditches to go see if he can save Baby Yoda, uh, Grogu, but he can't because the force field is just too strong, too strong mm-hmm. for the kids. Uh, so, blaster fire, and then we get to see Boba finally, which actually, up to this point, Boba has, has finally said more lines in live action than he <laughs> ever did yeah. in the original, original films. Film. Yep. Uh, <laughs> awesome fight scenes where Boba just like rips stormtroopers to shred with the gaffy stick. Proving that their armor is worthless. Uh, yeah. Fennec Shan also has some really awesome uh, gunfighting scenes yep. <clears throat> against the stormtroopers. Uh, Din eventually joins the fight and starts, you know, uh, helping them out. But all of a sudden, like they start being outnumbered because another transport ship uh, comes by, and it's like, oh shit, what are we gonna do? We're gonna, we're gonna lose apparently. But lo- what happened? Oh, Boba got his armor back, and then <laughs> yeah. rocking, rocking the dad bot. He just mows down all the stormtroopers. He's like, this dad bot ain't stopping me. The beer mm-hmm. gut? No, I still got the moves like Jagger. We're going we're gonna to do this. <laughs> destroys, destroys everybody. Lays waste. Uses the jet pack. And I like that he even had the time to get one of his own missile packs. Yeah. I don't know where he got it, but like he was like, no, yeah. I got to do the full costume. Well, yeah. And he shot from the kneecap, too. We've never and seen him yeah. do that. <laughs> On live action, we've never seen him do that. So no, no. So it was, it was, it was an awesome, awesome, awesome fight scene. Yeah. But whatever, good guys mm-hmm. win as usual. But big twist of the episode: mm-hmm. uh, Moff Gideon's ship yep. is in orbit, and what does he do? He doesn't destroy Mando. He doesn't shoot Baby Yoda slash Grogu. He goes after the Racer Crest, and boom, boom. Racer Crest is Bye, destroyed. Racer Crest. No one saw this coming, especially everybody that bought. The Racer Crest from Hasbro, from Haslabs, $350 down the drain. The ship doesn't exist anymore. <laughs> but well, maybe I, it makes hey, it more valuable it, it, now that it's yeah, important. True. This is true. It, it, this it is will true. be a memor- memorabilia. <laughs> Me- memorabilia, yeah. Uh, but then the, the other interesting <laughs> twist, at least personally for me, is that actually Boba Fett now is honor bound to, the, to Din yeah. and it, it vows to help him retrieve the child, which was a twist that I did not see coming, and we'll discuss later why. Mm-hmm. Uh, but now Din is in the Slave One, going with Boba Fett and Fennec Shan to Navarro to go see she who will not be named uh, on the planet who has actually finally become a marshal for the Republic. 
the New Republic. For the New Republic, sorry. Uh, mm -hmm. And there, Mando tells her that he needs her help to break out a prisoner so that they can find Moff Gideon. And mm -hmm. I did not like this because I do not like his acting in the episode, but they have to break out Bill Burr. Yeah. And that's basically where the episode ends. Mm. Oh, am I You're forgetting it? Grogu. Oh, right, right. Tossing I, 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 stormtroopers you're, you're for, around. You're forgetting like, the, the I, beginning of Darth Grogu. Yes, I forgot. <laughs> I, for, I forgot the little, the, the coda at the end. Grogu is force choking stormtroopers left and right. Literally. That was insane. But then what happens? You know, he's a baby. He's a baby. He falls he asleep. A little tired. So he yep. has to take a little nappy nap. And then uh, we get Moff Gideon. Uh, Giancarlo Esposito come. And he's like being all cute and sweet, actually. But in a evil way it shows in the dark saber mm -hmm. like hinting that hey you can you can turn into a joda in a pablo or Ma, in a dozen manos kind of way yeah, yeah very exactly. <laughs> yes. very breaking bad kind very of way. sinister yeah. i will destroy uh, you yes uh, but i will have that, this smile on my face <laughs> as i do it yeah. yes <laughs> and then uh, i think the episode the episode ends with him saying to call dr pershing yep. to tell him that he has uh, the asset so that the they donor, can extract the donor, the donor, the donor, the donor. So that mm -hmm. they can ex extract, extract whatever M, M count blood thing, whatever bone yeah. marrow, whatever it is uh, that they need from Grogu. Reactions. Okay, so <laughs> let's start I try dissecting. To be concise, but we, I know, I, I know. Try to be concise, let's but let's start tough. dissecting this. Okay, so yes. let's go back to the beginning. Uh, what we were talking about, Goose, uh, it sounded really much like uh, Din is talking to himself, convincing That's himself that yes. he can't keep Grogu. Like, yeah. I don't have the ability to train you, but it's him talking to himself. Yeah. And yeah. another reason that we do have to start making the effort of calling him Grogu, it's how cute he reacts every time he calls him Grogu. Like Very much so. Very much. He calls him Grogu and he looks over and laughs and then Mando laughs with him too. It's like, mm -hmm. oh my God, it's like I'm yeah. finally communicating with him. And I thought that whole scene was incredibly cute and and yeah. you're finally seeing that bond between them more and more that mm -hmm. has been something that had been missing in the past episode and i thought that was great so well, for me the name for me the name thing is a little more meta too because like in my mind it's one of those things like hey this is the name that this person that this entity has for uh, him her it self i don't know what grogu is at this point but that's what he wants to be called that's yeah. what we should call him yeah. yeah. uh, so that's yeah. kind of why i mm -hmm. think in a meta sense I'm trying to make a point to try and use rewire yes. rewire yeah. my mind mm -hmm. to start calling him that because I yes. think it transcends that we should always respect yeah. some, if someone wants to be called yeah. something yeah. we should do that mm -hmm. and respect them yeah that's, that's the absolutely. name he enjoys and that's the name he yeah. responds to and then it's his name so yeah we gotta yeah. get over it we gotta we we, yeah. we gotta get over that that naming Grogu mm -hmm. baby Joda uh, mm -hmm. baby uh, uh, Joda is uh, uh, cute uh, but so yeah, is Grogu. Cute. But, yeah, Grogu. But, but, yeah. but it, it does tie, again, it, the fact that it's a different name. And I kind of like the fact that they didn't use, like, Joda and Jattel, they kind of sounded similar. Yeah. So yep. I'm, I'm glad that didn't happen because it establishes Grogu's own identity and path. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Thank you. And, and, Agreed. And that's what, in this episode, we see the beginning of that, of Grogu mm -hmm. making their own choices. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, you can, like Nani said, that first scene where not only Grogu's responding mm -hmm. to Dense, like calls to the name and like mm -hmm. playing around, mm -hmm. but you actually see Grogu contemplating their future either with Mando, without Mando. Mm -hmm. You can see it in like the slide of the eyes, how usually Grogu will cool. This time he was like, pfft, like, like throwing raspberries yeah. and like, mm -hmm. no, I don't want that. Like, yeah. yeah. And then you have Grogu meditating, which yeah. is like, amazing. well, and even before Grogu yes. decides to do the meditation, it's that decision of do I actually call out or not call out? Because at first, Din is just like, does, did we break it? Is there an on button for this yeah. thing? How does it work? And how does and, it work? Yeah, and then Grogu's being kind of stubborn, like, I'm just going to sit here and I probably know how it works, but I'm not just going to make it work because you're telling me to make it work. Right. And then as soon as Din, like, starts to leave, boom, boom. it starts working, <laughs> you know? <laughs> which makes me which makes me think if it was something that, like, Grogu initiated just because he wanted to or more so because something reached out to him 
and then he felt the need to connect to it. I mean, that's great. Great questions. We, uh, yeah. I will follow. <laughs> like Mas fo a great question for another time. <laughs> no, no, no. I, I, I would, I would try to keep it within the canon. Ahsoka did say that only if Grogu reached out, somebody yeah. was going to respond. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So. That I mean, he had to the, choose. Yeah. That 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 mm -hmm. somebody called to Grogu and Grogu responded seems like an extra layer. Yeah. I mean, it could happen, but but I don't. I, I think it could be, and this could give credence to, you know, how the Jedi's were brainwashed and grown, mm. and like it could just be a a habit. You know, I'm I'm in a force sensitive place. So I'm gonna activate to it. Do, so I'm just gonna meditate. <laughs> nothing activate. else to do. My dad told me I had to, so I might as well. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I mean that 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 that's a possibility. Uh, mm -hmm. Although. I would, and there's open to interpretations, I would say that the fact that Grogu kept the force shield while meditating, even though then tried to break through it mm -hmm. three times, which is interesting. Yeah. I like that number. Uh, yeah. it, 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 it never broke. Yeah. And mm. I, don't, I, I can't talk about Jedi meditations, but I can talk about meditation uh -huh. by itself as... And even though you do have that ability to just shut that people out and you do have the ability to come back and actually, you know, disregard that force mm. shield and accept the person that's coming. Yeah. So at least the way I read the scene, and I could be completely wrong. I read it from my, my own perspective. Grogu and kept intentionally maintaining that form. Mm -hmm. It wasn't like Grogu was locked into it. It wasn't like you know, Grogu legitimately was like, you know, forget then. Mm -hmm. This is what I'm doing right now. Interesting. Because for me, uh, one of the things that I found interesting, and I thought I was going to go somewhere else with the rejection of Din and mm -hmm. the force field, I thought that it, what, what it was building up to was that the armor wasn't let him, letting him go through the shield, so he actually needed to remove it and, you know, and show and himself, reveal himself. To, and and then he would have been able to wow. connect and transcend the uh, shield to go to Grogu, uh, but that didn't happen. So, uh, but that was where I thought it was going. It was going like, like the first time that, that, that it would took be him good. down. That, that would the second really time good. it took him down. Like, dude, you have to, you have to just go as yourself. You can't go with with your guard up. But that would have been amazing. Third time. Like, ah, that that yeah. would have been yeah. Like symbolically speaking, that would oh, have yeah. been like exactly. <laughs> Uh, they, they, that, that's why Lucasfilm again you should consider as 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 Hidalgo does here to this podcast everybody else in Lucasfilm should, yes, yes. should actually should. listen all to this podcast all John of them. Favreau John Favreau hey I don't know if everyone knows this John Favreau is our number one fan uh, <laughs> so that's Dave Filoni mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, we have to make a pro probably now we have to do like a legal uh, claim now at the end of the episode just in <laughs> case. well Maybe Robert Rodriguez, who knows? Robert Rodriguez, hey, exactly. We didn't say that. Uh, oh, yeah. mm -hmm. This is one of those things to be proud of yeah. in this episode for the three of us. Uh, this is the first time that a Latina director has uh, directed a live action Star Wars. So good for us. Good for us. Finally. Even if we had nothing to do with it, but good for Robert Rodriguez. Exactly. <laughs> but but, 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 but it, was, it was an amazing piece of work. It was. Yeah. It was. It really. Fantastic. It really showed off his action shots because uh, it was fantastic. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But but going back, I think Nani said something at the beginning. Mm. This this episode to me felt the most Star Warsy out there. Yeah. Like mm. it's like boom boom like it just felt really? like really Star Wars to me. I don't know. Why. I got there that some... more from from the from the, the Carl siege? Weathers from the siege. the siege. That one. That one felt. So... I mean, not to say that this didn't feel Star Wars. Yeah. Besides, you have the Dark Troopers and Boba Fett and Slave One. So, I mean, it does feel Star Wars. -y, but for me, uh, the Siege was the most Star Wars -y just because it felt the most video gaming. Yes, yes. And you had like, I, all I, I these other, other things. Yeah. But close. But, this one was close. really close. Yeah. yeah. But, but it, it, go... it does keep. Yeah. Oh, oh sorry. I didn't want to interrupt. Uh, no, but for, uh, I wanted to say before I forget. Uh, one of the things that like I thought about, I don't know if you guys got this when you saw it. But the first thing that kind of popped into my mind when they were going into the scene, onto the scene stone, Jedi Temple zone, the first thing that popped into my mind was Weathertop 
Lord of the Rings. Like I was thinking of the Fellowship of the Ring when they spend the night at Weather Tower. And like, yeah. there's, there's there's something here. Yeah. And, something and, and, here. and and there was because I don't know for you guys, but especially when the dark troopers were dispatched by Moff Gideon and you have yeah. to see four black yeah. uh, yep. figures on the on the hilltop to take like the victim. I'm like this this I, even with that, I'm like hey, Weather Tower. You got <laughs> yeah. the Nazgul, yep. Frodo, Stabby Stab. Uh, except that instead of stabby, True. kidnapping. Wow. Uh, and there was something was so in- synchronized in the way that it was done, like as they yep. were falling and then when they land and then when they move forward, almost all yes. at the same, like it's like this hive mind kind of thing that was going on. And, and by the way, they just looked, those dark troopers looked. Amazing. Intimidating. <laughs> uh, and this is, a, I don't know if we, dis- I don't know if we, no, this is something we were discussing on Twitter with Pink Milk. And Mark and Brian, uh, we had like a theory that we were discussing where what if the dark troopers are made out of Beskar and okay. that Beskar was forged by the armor because Moff Gideon either kidnapped her or she's willingly working with him. Oh, well. Narratively, I think it would make sense because then it makes Mando question the cult he that he was raised with. by yeah. because now we got like this the leader of the cult because i mean she seemed like she was a de facto leader and mm-hmm. um, now she's just doing these weapons to like oppress people so again yeah. mando facing the reality of what mandalorians are with the armor bo-katan boba fett and cop van yeah which, which I think it, 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 no 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 sense. it's not not only i i was hesitant but the as you explained it now you're thinking it, more well, 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 well it, it reflects something that does happen in Rebels, which is the allegiance of the Mandalorians. Mm-hmm. Like, because at the end of the day, the Man- Mandalorians, as, at least from what we know, their allegiance is first to themselves and then to whatever, which is interesting because we finally see Boba taking something like a duty that's not imposed on him. Mm-hmm. Or, so... And the fact that both of them were foundlings and not actual Mandalorians, I think, it might actually pinpoint to that. Like, how, I don't know, I'm, I'm, I'm hesitant, I'm not going to buy it just yet, but I can see the threats. Yeah. Which, again, another thing that we didn't know, we had very little information about Yango Fett and Boba Fett before. Like The only thing actually- we had was the Olmec thing from uh, Clone Wars where all mech says that they're not Mandalorians. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And then now we actually know that Django was a family. So yeah. just you know, like just like uh, Din is. And so that's when he finally accepts that, you know, the armor is yours. You know, if your dad was a foundling, that means he's no less Mandalorian. You were the one who inherited it. So the armor is yours. But you know, him having to prove it so hard, again, like having to actually show him the writing, like the, the DNA attachment to him mm-hmm. or something that in the suit to like prove it to him, you know? But I, th- I think the only reason that that worked, frankly, because uh, I, I, I used to be, uh, obviously this episode mm-hmm. changed my mind on it, uh, but I used to be firmly on the, uh, on the team, which is basically the, you know, the George Lucas team of, uh, Boba and Yango not being Mandalorians. They're just bounty because, hunters like, who happen to have Mandalorian hunters, armor. Yeah. But like the way I, I do like how it's framed now because mm-hmm. like one, he's a foundling and two, he was rejected by Mandalorian high society. So mm-hmm. it kind of makes sense then that like Mando and Boba would kind of go off and do their own thing and say yeah. I don't have an allegiance to anybody because yeah. like it's like hey I like my father fought in the Mandalorian Civil Wars and Mm -hmm. he got ostracized and like rejected and not even accepted into the Mm -hmm. society that he, you know, was uh, uh, brought up from. So it's like, like, no. So it kind of then ties again to like uh, Din's relationship to what, again, to what is the Mandalorian creed and what does it mean to be Mm -hmm. a people? Yeah. So Mm -hmm. like now I I, I buy Boba coming back into the fold as a Mandalorian. Yeah. Especially okay. because, sorry, sorry. Let me finish real quick. Yeah, yeah. Especially <laughs> because, especially because he doesn't come into like the traditional evil Boba badass bounty hunter, 
but more because he is an honor bound person. He wants his armor, but he is willing to be honor bound to Din. Yeah. So it makes him more uh, adds layers to him. It does. It adds layers like to his character. Yes, yeah. definitely. Mm-hmm. You're not. <laughs> I, I, I now I kind of want to like fan out. What if we're actually the the fact that Boba is being back and the fact that Mando is looking for the Jedi? Will we get the backstory of how Django ended up with the Jedi and getting cloned? We could that get that backstory. Know. We could get that backstory. I don't know. It could be. I think it could we... be it could tie into how because the Mandalorian wasn't this the Mandalorian Civil War part the Jedi involved or am I wrong? No, that's a different. That's I think that's that's the, the the one previous to that, right? I think so. I think the that, so, so, so. So I think so the Civil maybe... War was just them, and then there's okay. like the Mandalorian Wars that are the ones with the Jedi. Okay, the Jedi. so what, I could so be wrong. What, I could be wrong. So, I'm not so Star Wars explained. <laughs> no, no, but, but 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 that's good. That's good because what if we're seeing, you know, this? We we've already seen snippets of the the multiverse. What if we're seeing mm. the first snippet of like the High Republic before like the like the Mando Wars, and we're seeing like the well, but that, that the but that doesn't make sense with how old Django is. If yeah, the no. High Republic is two hundred years before. But Django, uh, Django could be Django could end up being another clone. Clones are top of clones. Clo- yeah. Clones are clones. <laughs> clones are clones. I mean, yeah. and and uh, and Django, Django could be actually a clone of the first Mandalorian Jedi. I am gonna veto this idea. I'm going. Wow. To, I don't know. You I don't know. I'm, just, I'm, I'm gonna just go executive powers. <laughs> executive powers. Executive powers. That, that, that's why I told you. I, 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 I'm fan. No, because I'm, we I'm know we know who the fan, we, fan we know <laughs> we know who the the first Mandalorian Jedi was. It was the Tar Vizsla, I think. It was the Vizsla clan who was the uh, wielder of the dark saber originally. Yeah, yeah, but but, but, but we, we wouldn't, know wouldn't, it, wouldn't it be a beautiful like tie in no. together? No, because it's the clone of the one that invented the dark saber was actually Boba Fett. The son of the clone that invented the oh, dark because saber. then we th- then we go into that whole thing that we have been criticizing since we started this podcast. It's like not everything has to be about the same people. Yeah, but but, <laughs> but if they do it if they do it well, I'm down for it. Okay. Oh well. Okay. Yes. Let's put a pin in that because we're going far above <laughs> and beyond what this episode is. Okay, guys, I love you, but come on, concise. Anyway. Going back to Boba, how awesome did they do like all that scarring on him? I'm assuming from the Sarlacc pit. I would like to know you if he actually survived it. have to from the dad bod somehow. Look, I, I don't know what your issue with the dad bod is, honestly. It's not. I, I'm fine with it. It's just that it just took me by surprise. It, it just took me by surprise. Looked, I wasn't expecting it. Uh, he looked incredibly badass when he first shows he up all hooded in black. All the scars from the Sarlacc pit, which were yes. great. Yes. Um, no eyebrows. How, no eyebrows. How awesome <laughs> did he look destroying those stormtroopers with the gas? Oh, yeah. oh, yeah. I mean, oh, yeah. that entire sequence was just like brutal and so well executed. And he's just eviscerating them. Like, you yep. see pieces oh, yeah. of their armor just flying everywhere. Flying everywhere. It's it was, like, is that made of cheap, cheap plastic? Like, what the yes. Was, well, it is. <laughs> it was incredible. Yeah. yeah. It was incredible. It was so well shot. Um, Fennec always. I love Ming Na. It was so fun to have her back. She had yeah, a re- it's so nice to have her confirmed to be around still. Yeah, I, 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 again, in Star Wars, nobody ever is really dead. <laughs> yeah, and now in this one, we literally had two characters <laughs> who were assumed to have been dead come back. Um, yeah. I like that they said right away that it really was Boba Fett, so we don't have to keep guessing if it's some r- other random clone or whatever. Mm-hmm. So I like that confirmation. Um, it was just, I wasn't expecting either of them to show up in this episode. Yeah. At all. Yeah, the, 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 I, I, was, I, I was, I was kind of expecting Boba. For some really? Reason. Already? Really? On this, on this episode? Well, well, I, I, I wasn't expecting Boba as a cliffhanger just because mm. Boba is not a main arc, or at least for mm. now. So I, I who knows? I he might be one of the companions yeah, yeah. now. Yeah, yeah. I would no, not no, be opposed to I, it. I, 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 like I'm no, just totally I, seeing. He needs to, uh, he needs to go on his leave. way. Yeah. No, I'm totally seeing Boba is the grandpa. <laughs> Grogu is no, the grandchild. Oh, Grief Karga is the grandpa. Yeah, but you can have two grandpas. True, yes. true, true. <laughs> like... True. <laughs> However, my concern is, my concern is, and mm. I, this is the only reason like I'm arguing against that point, is because 
it's the issue that all three of us have had with this season so far, which is like leaning too much into the familiar and the known. Yeah. Uh, to like entice people to be invested in it instead of doing what was done more so in the first season, which is like world build and create like a universe that's its own thing, even though it does callbacks and it does mm -hmm. tie ins and little uh, cameos and whatnot, but it still stands on its own. And like, even though I really, really enjoyed today's episode, especially like how they brought Boba Fett back into the fold, I feel like going into that direction and keeping him invested in the main storyline is falling into that trap of like not letting The Mandalorian as a show stand on its own creatively. Yeah. Even um, though yes. they did it great. Yes. I think that it's all going to depend on if they're actually able to save Grogu within mm -hmm. the next two episodes. Yeah, because they are. Who knows? They might leave it as in they weren't able to save him. I mean, Good. they Be could fair. leave a horrible, you know, cliffhanger yeah, that, like that. that. It could, could happen. A, it could happen. So I think uh, Boba is going to remain honor bound as long as they don't save him. I think once they do save him, he'll probably go on his own. Mm -hmm. But mm -hmm. I wouldn't hate them traveling together because this isn't the Boba that we've always known. This is a Boba mm -hmm. that has grown and has changed and it's a different character. And he might be yeah. able to help... Yes. Mando find himself too as like these two you know kind of exiled members of their own community you know mm -hmm. so I don't think he would detract that much from the story if you do it right not how they've done with other characters so I would not be opposed if he would stuck around or or maybe show up every every other episode like you know checking in what are you guys up to something like that I wouldn't <laughs> like, be against it that's my grandson uh... <laughs> <laughs> well, well, but 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 it's interesting because we do see a different boba mm -hmm. the last time we saw boba yes but Bo like boba had no problem de dealing with the empire and then yeah. here it's like you actually get boba kind of like oh shit the empire's mm -hmm. back like yeah it, and it wasn't the same like it wasn't it's interesting because I'm, I'm i'm now wondering where the hell did boba's credit with the empire disappeared Like mm -hmm. Boba died, and or, or or was Boba just Darth Vader's? Exactly, like, that's what I was gonna say. Guy, I don't know. Who knows? Like this, this brings a lot of yeah. The thing I is, think it would that... depend a lot on who saved him from the Starlight yeah. Pit and oh, what happened himself. in that, or by himself. Who knows? Well, But well, it seems... I, 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 yeah, no, same old. Oh, I was just gonna like I, I at least my head canon was that whatever dra that drag the great dragon ate mm -hmm. the Starlight Pit. The Sarlacc, and then that's when Bob escaped. But yeah, yeah, I think he escaped in a similar fashion to how Din escaped the Great Dragon. But it, you know, it took him a little longer to do it. So as you can was, see, he's been partly digested. Yeah, he, exactly. Pro probably he, yeah. went to the backside. Maybe, maybe. <laughs> so like he, so it's fair to say he's been through some shit. Uh, yeah. And after that, Act. he was a little tired, so he had to take a little Grogu nap. And during his Grogu nap, the Jawas took the armor away. I think that or, I think that's, or, that's what makes sense to me right now. Or maybe we'll actually tie it back to what you said, Goose, earlier, that Mando has to shed the armor. Maybe Boba had to shed the armor to get out to of the solid bit. Oh. I think, I think, I think, uh, because this, here's here's what, like, I the whole wow. Boba thing today took me by surprise, <laughs> because I thought that his... And, and based on what you guys have just said, my theory is maybe not dead in the water yet. Yet. Uh, because my theory with Boba was that he hadn't gotten his armor back because he didn't want it. Because after yeah. being yeah. five years yeah. mm -hmm. in the desert, he realized that he is not that person anymore and he has transcended the armor. Mm -hmm. And he didn't take it from Cobb because he realized that Cobb needed it. Yeah. Yep. For, you know, for the greater good, so to speak. Yeah. So when today's uh, Friday's episode happened, I was like, oh, okay, so that's dead now. But now, based on what you guys are saying, mm -hmm. maybe he's just using the armor now because of whatever's happening. And he's mm -hmm. going to have an evolution where after he his honor boundness to yeah. Din, once he fulfills it, he's like, oh, I don't need this anymore. And the armor, my head kind of is still that the armor is going to go back to Cobb. Okay. We'll see. And that... We'll see, we'll see. I, I mean, not not just because I think Timothy Oliphant is a handsome man that looks amazing in the armor, but more so because I think it speaks to Bob uh, uh, Din's growth 
of who he is as a character and having a non-Mandalorian who is a non wearing the nothing yeah. that has to do with mm-hmm. being Mandalorian, wearing Mandalorian armor to protect people speaks to Din's character and who he is. So it, I don't know. I, I and you don't cast Timothy Oliphant to only have him one episode. So he has to come back. <laughs> and, 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 and didn't die. So still yeah, didn't, die. didn't die. Yeah. By the uh, way, can we talk about how awesome it is to have Mandalorian armor with scarves now? We had the the red scarf with Timothy Oliphant. Now we yeah. have the black scarf. Yeah. It looks we amazing. Need those black series. Yeah. yeah. Black series. Oh, I need this. Yeah. Hasbro, please. Well, <laughs> how awesome was it when you finally see him? I know you have the issue with the bod, that bod, whatever. But when... Not an uh, issue. It when, actually makes me feel good because once I... <laughs> fully embrace mine i can cosplay without and still fear be super cool without fear. exactly yeah exactly. but i thought it was really cool how you know when as soon as you saw cod vanth with it you knew that he wasn't really boba because the armor yeah. was like big on him and like, it looks uh, kind of awkward and kind of yeah. you know sliding mm-hmm. off and then when you see boba wearing it it's like a second oh, skin yes. and he just looks like he owns it like this is my armor and and his like response time once he has that thing on it's just like ridiculous mm-hmm. it's like on the side over yeah. here just like so, which, it was which, so which, good. yeah, which which ties back to that idea that you were saying, Nani, mm-hmm. that and in Goose, that yes, once you shed the armor, but once you embrace it again, just as a tool, mm-hmm. then it just becomes this asset, kind of like how you know once you're you're past any like a bad situation, once you're past your depressions, once you're past it, it. it that becomes your asset now. Mm-hmm. Like it never leaves. Mm. Your, your armor will always be there. Yeah. But, but now instead of defining you, you, your you identity. Yes. Uh-huh. Your armor doesn't define you. Your armor is just a tool in your shed. Like, that you I use like, as you choose. And now you oh control it. Not of it I controlling love that. you. I love that. That's so good. And that made me think. And this is no. going to be wild theory. going to be wild theory. <laughs> uh, based on what you just said, what if in terms of like the hero's journey thing, We've had many uh-huh. characters come in season two that could serve as Mando's uh, mentor, right? The wise mentor, like a la Obi-Wan to Luke, mm-hmm. Han to Rey, et cetera, et cetera. What if instead of it being Bo- uh, Bo-Katan. Bo-Katan or yeah. uh, Ahsoka, it's actually Boba, Boba Fett and Boba Fett dies in oh. season three. Okay. Mm-hmm. Or, or, serving, or, or, serving. Or, or to be to sever ties to, oh, we're going to be a big family and keep together, Boba's going to die saving the child. Exactly. And that's how we get <sighs> that thing where Trent makes yeah. uh, mm-hmm. uh, Din Djarin go through his hero's journey the by hero's lo- journey, losing yeah. the mentor. And then it opens up the armor to go back to Cobb and like, keep the cycle of like, okay, this armor is meant to protect. And and, and, and it's, it's interesting. It, it is. And, 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 and the... And, Boba, one, one, yes, and one, one line that will give credence to that is right after Boba does that shot with the mm. uh, with the missile, jet pack, the, the, the jet missile. Pack, yeah, yeah. yeah. And Mando's like, the other one. Uh. yeah, and Mando's like, nice shot. It's mm-hmm. like Mando's like, oh, I've like I've got to recognize this. Yeah, Whoever this guy impressed. is clearly yeah. knows their armor. Clearly, yeah. mm-hmm. and then and then Boba's like. Yeah, I was saving for the other one. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I know. That was great. <laughs> <laughs> there were so many moments, really, that were just so incredibly cool from this episode, really, mm-hmm. that that just catch your attention. But there's so much to, you know, dive into, you know, as we've been yeah. doing now, like this character of uh, of Boba Fett that, you know, like you said, Goose, this is the most lines he's ever said in live action, you know, And the ever. most he's ever done. And, and according to Twitter, he, like, he, this episode has converted everyone that was not a Boba Fett yeah. a disciple and yeah. it's turned everyone into a Boba Fett stands. Everyone's just like, okay, Boba yeah. Fett is badass. The only issue okay. I have with yes. that is like all those like bros that are like, oh, Boba Fett's so cool. It's like, see you, bro. It's like, that's the no. only issue I have. Like, take it down, dude. Like, he's take cool down, because he actually, yeah. now he's cool because he actually has an arc as a person before. Yeah. And you can he see this evolution, cool yeah. Him. You've yeah. Get, you've given this character who always has been badass, but I honestly thought everybody mm-hmm. kind of 
exaggerated it because he yep. honestly did so little. He was badass, but he did very little. But now there's so much depth to this character and there's mm. so many opportunities to keep further developing it. And especially with his relationship, whatever it becomes with Din will be great. Yeah. And it, there's just this amazing attention to detail as well. Like the slave one, I was not expecting uh. to do the slave one at all, but y- you could see like, the controls on the inside the controls, and stuff. The knobs and yeah, that's exactly what I was gonna. I was looking up on my phone that exact same thing because there was a tweet that came out because obviously there's some nerds that are like on it all the time. All and the time. I applaud them for it because I appreciate seeing all that stuff. But it was oh, basically. I appreciate it. We, I don't get to watch an episode. It was basically like this. Before it was I like buy this it. thing. Yeah. This mm-hmm. is like the control. The control from uh, the control from today and uh, from Friday's episode. And then here's from Attack of the Clones. Like they went through, obviously, if you guys want to see it, yeah. go into our Twitter because we retweeted it. But like the attention to detail, <laughs> it's, so, it's so like respectful and amazing that mm-hmm. it feels, it just gives warm feelings to the heart. Yes. And especially when Boba says the callback line to Django, I'm just a simple man trying to make my way yes. to the galaxy. I was like, ah. Oh. Yeah, I got, I got some goosebumps there when that happened. It was, yeah. it's so good. Cause you see this, this one episode, you know, kind of brings back stuff from season one. It types back to like yes. a lot of Boba history and, you know, I recommend as somebody that started watching, you know, the Clone Wars animated series recently, you mm-hmm. get Boba as yeah. a kid and how he kind of develops this, you know, so there's so much that ties to this episode to other things that mm-hmm. it just kind of blew my mind. Uh, yeah. And this was, I wasn't expecting this episode, honestly, but it was the episode I needed. Yeah, especially yeah. after last episode. Yes. Wish, yes. wish is a good point to say that this is our first episode on YouTube that got <laughs> dislikes. People did not like us being critical to the Ahsoka episode. You need to get over that. That's good, yes. So do all those people, thank you. Like we got a lot of support on Twitter from especially Ty, our very good friend, saying like, "Hey, you made it! You made it to YouTube! You gotta this." Because not people dislike you. No, but but exactly. no, no, but I, I, I want I, if 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 you do this, like, please add a comment. Like, let us yeah, know. Yeah, tell us why you, you don't like, like it, mm-hmm. so we can engage. In, like, that's that's the beauty of this. Thanks. This mm-hmm. just this just as you guys listen to us, we also mm-hmm. listen to you. We want the conversation. Oh, mm-hmm. A conversation that's open, and, and we want to know why we're wrong or why you think we're wrong. And then maybe we'll be like, oh, sh- shit, we're wrong. Or, oh, shit, I think you're still wrong. But I, I, re- I respect your opinion. <laughs> I respect your opinion. So. <laughs> uh, but uh, going back to like what Nani was saying about the tiebacks to like uh, Clone Wars and all these things, I think that's the good thing that this show has, especially with this episode proven, is that no episode is a filler episode. Every episode in some way is going to, come back and pay off because a lot of people that thought that the prisoner episode mm-hmm. with the new republic ship yeah. and all those wasn't you know was a filler and that nothing to do with the main storyline but with today's episode uh, friday's episode no we know that they're coming because back. now we mm-hmm. need same thing so so frog lady maybe a frog lady becomes a bounty hunter <laughs> he comes back in season three she's like she's with a jetpack, it's gonna, gonna kill, it's, kill people. Or, yeah. Better yet, it's gonna be frog lady and like a mm-hmm. bunch of frog babies. Tadpoles, oh yeah, tadpoles oh, yeah. just like <laughs> in her army, in her the, army yes. of tadpoles. <laughs> um, anyway, so now I think we can confirm that Grogu was able to get the signal out. You know, yeah. yeah. So do we think so anybody's there's... gonna respond? <sighs> See, this is the thing. Like, uh-huh. I didn't want him. To yeah. do that. You thought one of the things you were saying was that maybe it got like the temple got destroyed in the middle of him sending the message and it didn't get through, but this did not um, happen because you can see Grogu actually turning it off by himself at the end. He was interrupted by Din. Yep. Yeah, and yep. he was out on there for a while. So, so he was somebody Skyping got the for a while. Yeah. <laughs> he was, yeah. But uh, I'm thinking somebody got the signal. I mean, I have no idea how they're gonna make this happen, but signals out for, there. I mean, there's a stupid theory online about Mace Windu. That's stupid. It's been going around for a while. Uh, Yep. Mm -hmm. Everyone that thinks that's stupid. So no, Uh, just like the video, bro. I guess. Uh, I'm. 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 I'm, I don't. I don't think any of them might be stupid in the sense that we might actually see some new. Like, you might not need a real Jedi to physically come 
we already seen how Master Luke and other Jedi's can use the Force to influence the reality. Reach out, yeah. Yeah, and reach out. So it could. Shall and touch faith. The best one. Yeah. Like never. I, I, never, I mean, never I mean, even, even, <laughs> even, even if we, we even have. You weren't kidding. We, Ah, no, you weren't. We, we even have physical interactions of force like so it's possible that we might not see somebody physically appear mm -hmm. but maybe appear to or help Grogu mm -hmm. or we which is interesting I, I thought we're not getting Grogu's full story at least that's how I read this yeah. episode mm -hmm. we, we're finally seeing a more mysterious Grogu we don't we don't quite know what Grogu's next steps are. Like he was he's force not such choking. a baby. He was force choking some stormtroopers. Uh, and, 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 he, so he's acting like a baby and he's not such a baby? Uh, no, I'm, I'm saying at least for now, Grogu's acting more on instinct and habit rather mm -hmm. than on actual... We, we, we might see the breaking away from instinct and But the moment Moff Gideon showed the saber, mm -hmm. Grogu's first reaction was trying to grab the saber. Yeah, and or force push um, it away or something. Or force. Mm -hmm. So that so that means a we it's already confirmed that either Grogu has all its memories or all their memories back, or mm -hmm. somehow dealing with Ahsoka opened up mm -hmm. those memories because clearly Grogu recognized what a saber was. Mm -hmm. And even Moff Gideon implied it, like, oh, you yeah. remember this from mm -hmm. here. Like, I'm playing you're not with ready you. for it. Yeah, yeah. You're yeah. not ready for it. Like, which is, I, I, it got me more excited. I'm, I'm, I'm a sucker for the evil people. Like, <laughs> of course. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so uh, you want, so, yeah, the so more complicated, I, I, the better. Yes, mm -hmm. and, and, and I, I, to be, I, I have to be really honest. When I first saw that Moth Gideon was George Esposito, I was a little bit hesitant. Mm. Not because of his ask, a, acting skills, but because in my mind, he is that Breaking Bad boy yeah. of my Gustavo, Gustavo Frank. Gustavo mm -hmm. Frank. Like, like yeah. to me. And, During a name. Oh, yeah. Yes. And, and then, and now we're th seeing like a Moth Gideon mixed, <laughs> which is like amazing. I love yeah. it. I'm like, Dude, he, just and you can tell that doing. he's having so much fun doing, doing it. Doing it? Yes. Yeah, you can tell. Okay. Be, be, yeah. Between between him and that officer. She, oh, by the way, like they, a power couple. They're like they, boom, boom, boom. Yeah. I, I don't know. I don't know if, if, if that officer is they or she. I have to confirm that. I'm sorry. I'm sorry if I'm misgendering. Uh, but uh, the Katana cast and Pink Milk, I think, are doing it. Katana already did it. They already had an interview with her that they put out on Thursday or Friday, I think. So make sure to check that. It's actually a really good interview. And, I mean, this comes out on Monday. So Saturday, Pink Milk is having uh, her over or they over. So make sure to check that. It should be really fun, too. So Yeah. Yeah, yeah but I think. And now we can't do it because now we're just going to be on the bandwagon. If we... <laughs> well, but, but there was but something that, really That means cool. we can invite the director, Robert Rodriguez. Rodriguez, uh-huh. Yeah. Hey. Uh, hey. <laughs> Hey. Dreaming doesn't cost a thing. Eh. True. Exactly. True. Anyway. And, 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 and look and look where it got us. We're this was a dream. So this was hey. a dream. I know. Uh, but anyway, going back to that, I, I love how you were saying that, Mo, that uh, you're seeing uh, Grogu maybe get beyond the just the instinctual reactions and trying to make like more active mm. choices. And I think the conversation with Ahsoka also kind of implied that Grogu might have been a problematic student. Because it said that three years he was with a lot of masters. With well, because he was so, there for 50 years. People he wasn't there. Years. He wasn't there for 50 years. He's been missing for a lot of them by himself. True, true. Well, but he's, like the, he's, the he's Jedi been missing take for 30 the, plus years, right? No, At because this, this is five years after. Oh, good point. No, good because point, this, point. this is he's after Order 66. Yeah. He's 50 years old. This is five years after Return of the Jedi. So fine. He will. Okay. Yeah. I'll allow it. Yes. He right. was so, so, so that means, yeah. You can Grogu potentially was, be true. Yeah. Grogu he was, was probably like a youngling. Something. Yeah. Or, yeah, yeah, or still a youngling when, when Order 66 happened. Yeah. So, yeah. you know, if by that age, he'd already been through a bunch of masters. Yeah. But then again, okay, I'm going to go back to what I was going to say originally, though. In mm -hmm. the amount of time that he would have 
gone through those masters, normal, and when I say normal, I mean like a humanoid students that mm -hmm. have a similar age growth spurts as mm -hmm. humans would have just, you know, had one master 10 years, like, yeah. I don't know how many years it is, but like mm -hmm. the amount of years that like Obi-Wan yeah. had Qui-Gon, et cetera, then Jedi Knight go, Grogu's still a, a young baby. A yeah. baby. So he needs more masters because because maybe the time's up and those masters needs to go back and teach someone else or yeah. he's dead and they need well, someone else. Well, it was a theory. So it, it could be that he was problematic. True, true. No, I like no, it. No, but, I like but, it. but uh, no, no, I like not it. I, I like it. It, it. it makes more sense canonically. I think what the story was aiming was a what Goose is saying. Like, oh, it's okay. 50 years old. Like, okay. yeah, you're going to go to a lot of masters. Mm -hmm. But... I, my nephew the... <laughs> got sport, uh, the Mandalorian, uh, the Mandalorian on Fortnite. There we go. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. Uh, that is awesome. Share, he just sent it to me. I am gonna miss the Razor Crest. Really? What if he gets it's a Razor? Yes. What if he gets? What's it? What if he gets a Slave Two or a Razor or another Razor? Razor Crest Two. Yep. Like. Well, no, I, all about, it's all about toys. He's getting a new one. Yeah, he's getting a new but one. It's, it's, it's still all about awesome records. to be flying now on the slave one. So yes. that's kind of just which, which, which not now. I'm like grateful that we had on this like the ghost and rebel for the whole season. Oh, <laughs> like, yeah. ooh, what if he gets? Now you said, what if he gets the out, uh, <laughs> not the outrider, but the same model of as the outrider from Shadows of the Empire, which wow. we know is already canon because it was on Rebel, and. That's a way to kind of bring back Dash Rendar without making it Dash Rendar. It's Mando on the Outrider. Oh, although, although I do want to see those Mandalorian ship, like the one that uh, Darth Maul oh, had. Oh, yeah. That just, yeah, yeah, oh, I want to yeah, see that in live yeah. action. Yeah. <laughs> no Technically, man. we have seen it in the Rise of Skywalker for a split second. Really? I don't yes. remember it, but okay. Yes. Anyway, I, I think we should like, be wrapping up, guys. We oh, want to yeah. keep these Mando episodes shorter than the usual sure. stuff. So anything to say before we leave? Do we uh, have I any projections for next episode? Oh, OK. Well, uh, I think it's I mean, obviously going to be involving a prison break or something. Uh, I really don't want it to limit itself to that. Maybe it'd be better if we actually find him already having taken the prisoner out so we can do something different. Right, not because this is the, the last two that. episodes. Yeah, not waste an entire episode on doing a prison break. Because if they do that, I'm going to be really upset, honestly. Because it's the last two. This is keep it up. You did really well with this one. Let's let's set this rescue up. Let's let's meet Bo-Katan. Let's you know do something. He he still has the Beskar spear, so yes, yeah, showdown. Yep, we can yeah. look forward. I think to a showdown at least in the last episode. But let's see what happens on the next one. Yeah. Mo, what were you going to uh, say before I interrupt you? <laughs> I probably forgot. It probably wasn't that important. But <laughs> go, going back to I the apologize. predictions, uh, I think I think I, I, what Nani says sounds like the the best prediction. I I'm mm -hmm. I'm gonna be a little bit more tone it down, and I think we're two episodes. So next episode is gonna be the prison break, yeah. which is okay. interesting because it was it also. Episode seven, the prisoner, or was it episode six? I'm just one. I think it was six. Okay. Well, still, it, it, it kind of keeps on. Oh, we had a prisoner. Now it's a prison escape. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, and then the last episode might be the actual let's save Grogu. Mm -hmm. I, I, I think... wish they wish based on what Nani said, and it's good theory. Maybe they don't save Grogu in this. Mm -hmm. Well, maybe, maybe that as a cliffhanger for season three. Uh, I, when Nani said that, all of a sudden, I was like, uh, I, I was thinking okay of like, it. no, but, 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 but the first thing that came to mind was like this whole movie homebound, the, the dogs and the cat going home. It's a fantastic movie. <laughs> no, no, but, but, but yeah, no, no, it's, it's a fantastic movie. Available I'm, I'm, on I'm, Disney plus, please, please give. <laughs> but, but no, no, but, 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 I'm, but I'm thinking like maybe Grogu escapes somehow. Oh, and he and tries to make himself and, back and, to Din. And tries to find Din. And then Din is trying to find Grogu. And then we have wow, season three okay. where it's or, one under self. They're separated then, but trying to get back to each other. Yeah. Or what if Ezra or whichever Jedi that okay. he connected with saves, Grogu. saves him 
in the pen. Wow, there's so much. Okay, before so we much. start spending an entire episode debating what could possibly <laughs> happen, I think we should say goodbye. <laughs> I, 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 I thought it was an amazing episode. I love, mm -hmm. yes. I love seeing Grogu meditating. That was just like, ah. Yes, and it was the exact position. I mean, it was so well done. I was just like, the lotus yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, the little nails the together and everything. And everything. Oh. I, was like, ah. I was like squealing like a little kid. Like, oh my God, like, ah. Yes, it was too good. It was too it was good. Great. And the director by Latine, a director. Mm -hmm. So like, it was uh, all the more savory. Yeah. Robert Rodriguez did a fantastic job. I think it was the great uh, episode beginning to end. It was one of the shortest ones, but it didn't, it feel, it felt complete. It had, you know, three acts. It did so much with the time that it had and nothing seemed extra. So nothing there, there was, was really, yeah. there, and there was nothing else to add. And it didn't feel rushed also. Yeah, like, it, it did. Exactly. Yeah. It was just, there was, like, there was an, an economy of storytelling that was, that frankly amazing. It's, yeah. It was fantastic. So little what some shows can't do in an hour. An hour yeah. or more. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. so maybe, maybe we'll get Robert Rodriguez to be a guest in our <laughs> Coming soon. <laughs> well, with that fanciful idea, <laughs> I think we are done. Look forward to our next episode. We release yes. regular episodes on Wednesdays. Like, subscribe, follow us. If you don't like what we're saying, tell us why you don't like it. So we know it's a conversation. Yeah. And I think it's two episodes left, guys. I think it's, it's going to be a ride. Oh, yeah. and, and even if you, you dislike us, we still love you. We will still <laughs> want you to keep hearing our shows. Yes. And if you like that Robert Rodriguez directed this episode, don't forget to go to our Tea Public store. Uh, you can just look at, at Pride of the Force. And we have like our directed by Robert Rodriguez t-shirts, along with some really cool t-shirts. So, <laughs> and tote bags, v-neck sweatshirts, anything. Masks. Yeah. Masks. Wear your mask. Go wear your mask. Masks. Uh, this is the holidays. And if, Be and careful, if you can guys. wear a tried out the fork mask, then better. Even better. <laughs> so much more cool. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think this is it. Signing off, guys. May the force be with you. Good night.